So we're going to be doing the next few lectures in Blender. When you first start, you'll get a splash screen. I'm, I'm using 3.5, the new one. Uh, we're going to be doing general for most of the first few lectures. The user interface, the tools over here on the side, they'll change based upon like what mode you're in. And if you don't know what the tools are, you can always click and drag to make them wider so you can actually see the names of all the tools. Okay, so that's a handy little feature. And if your tools are eating up too much real estate, hit the letter T on your keyboard, T for tools to show or hide them. So basically in a nutshell, this is called the 3D viewport. It's the same as the composition panel in After Effects. This is where you're gonna see your animation. This part over here is called the outliner and it's the same as the project panel in After Effects. Down here, is your properties panel. And that's gonna change based upon what you're doing. So for instance, I've got this cube selected. If I throw a modifier on it, I've got different things than if I click on my light bulb. So basically what you're gonna see over here depends upon what you've got selected in your viewport. That makes sense so far? Yeah. Okay. Now you can click and drag out between these to change how much space to take up. By default, the layout is your 3D viewport, your outliner, your properties, and your timeline, okay? That's your basic layout. You can change any of these panels anytime you want up here at the top left corner by clicking on it and choosing what you want. So if I don't want the timeline and I wanna work on materials, I can go to my shader editor, okay? Whenever these pop-out menus happen, when you change a panel, hit the N key. If you want one to add into a panel, hit the N key again. And you can mouse wheel over any of the settings if you don't have enough real estate on your screen to see what each of these panels is. Same with up here at the top. If I run out of space, I can use my mouse wheel to scroll along and see what's hidden. Make sense? All right. Up here at the top, these are your different ways of viewing what's in your viewport. So there's wireframe. You hover over and it'll show you. That's viewport shading. This one is for materials. So this is solid, really. This one's for materials, and this one is rendered. It shows you what it looks like with the lights in the scene, and it'll update in real time. You'll notice the other ones don't do that, just rendered. So rendered's for seeing the solid render with the materials plus the lighting in your scene. I usually, when I'm working, use solid while I'm just modeling and laying stuff out just so that I'm not distracted by all the other elements. And then when I got to fine tune it, I uh, go into render mode. Up here at the top, these are your workspace tabs. For instance, sculpting, you get a completely different set of tools than if you were in layout mode. Uh, texture paint, you can click through all of them and each one has its own purpose. For now, we're gonna be focusing on layout and basically layout for the most of this. Layout, that's where you start off. Let me get rid of this material. All right. When you are starting your scene, up here at the top, you've got object mode. Object mode is for adding objects and moving them around. If you need, so think of object mode like the solid arrow in Illustrator. You select an item and you move it. If you wanna change the mesh or the geometry of it, that's when you go into edit mode. Edit mode is like the white arrow in Illustrator. It allows you to start changing the geometry. So object mode is for moving things around and adding them in edit mode is for changing the mesh and the geometry. Everyone go with that so far? Okay. 
All right, now I'm gonna go to object mode. In After Effects, your four principles of, I mean, your four pillars of motion design, you got position, scale, rotation, and opacity. In 3D, you don't really mess around with opacity that much. That's in other menus. So for now, you're gonna focus on position, which in 3D, they call it location. So it's location, scale, and rotation, okay? Like if I hit my N, my sidebar over here, see there's my location, my rotation, and my scale. You can always adjust things using your sidebar, or you can use prompts. I'm gonna teach you the keyboard shortcuts. One second. Let me turn on my screencast before I forget. All right. So you can see my keys changing over here and any mouse I click on will tell you what I'm doing. So when you follow along to this afterward, you know, cause I'm recording it, you'll be able to follow along more easily. Okay. Position. In After Effects, you would hit P to get the position stopwatch. In Blender, it's G for grab. So I select the object by clicking on it, or you can click on it in your outliner. G for grab, R for rotate, S for scale. Those are your shortcuts. G, R, and S. Everyone good with that so far? Okay. Now, you're in a 3D space, so that's going to make it more, compli more complicated to work. I always use my gizmo over here. X. If I want to move this, G, and then the letter X, it's moving in the direction of the X axes. I'm going to hit undo. So you can type in an axis and then transform it. So if I want this to scale out only on the X, only on the X, I can hit S, X, click and drag, and then left click to accept it. So I scaled only on the X axes. Everyone go with that so far? Yep. All right, additionally, you can type in numbers. So if I wanna rotate this 45 degrees, I can say R, Y, 45, and then left click to accept it. And I rotated 45 on the Y. Let me move that screencast thing real quick. There we go. Okay. Speaking of that side corner, let me re undo this. So if I go R, Y, 45, left click to accept, this down here is called the review panel. So as long as I didn't click again, I can edit this. So instead of Y, I can say the Z axis. And then once I click off, I lose the review panel. So that's another way you can edit your shapes in the scene. Any questions on that? Okay, let me give you a quick troubleshooting tip. Once I turn or scale geometry, you always want to apply those transforms because once you start doing things like texturing and UV unwrapping, that's when you're gonna run into issues. So to apply transforms, it's control A, and then you choose what you want. I usually just be safe, I choose I choose apply all transforms like that. And that won't mess up your uh, texturing once you start doing that. Okay, so I'm gonna add back in my basic shape. Shift A is to add anything. And here's your whole menu. So curves are for drawing lines. Your basic geometry is basic is basically under mesh. So I'm just gonna go back to a basic cube. All 
All right. Now, you can add whatever you want by hitting Shift A, Mesh. I'll throw in a cylinder as well. Move it on the X, so that's G, X. Slide and left click to accept it. So that's basically how you start adding out your scene. And then you can figure out what you need to edit down the road. This is our viewport. If you hit the tilde key on your keyboard, you get a flyout wheel. And if you're not getting that, you need to do some add-ons. So let's do the add-ons real quick. You would go edit, preferences, then add-ons. 3D navigation is the one you want to turn on for that. Uh, another one that we'll be using this week, type in B-O-O-L and click on the checkbox for bull tool. And let me think, what's another one we may need? So bull tool and 3D navigation should be good for now. Whenever you do turn on add-ons, you gotta click save and load. Set that they're there, you know, next time you start up. Now, over here in the sidebar, you'll have a lot less panels than I do. I've, I've got a ton because I've been using this program for a little while. The view panel. In the view panel, if you click on camera to view right here, if you click that on and then use your tilde key and you go to view camera, this is the fast, easy way of moving your camera around. The left mouse button will allow you to orbit. If you hold down shift while you click the middle mouse wheel, you can pan from side to side or tilt up and down. And that will help you with your basic uh, camera movement. The mouse wheel on its own will zoom you in or out. So that's how you can set up your camera. And if at any point you need to see your render view, this is what the viewer is going to see. This is like the program monitor or the composition panel in After Effects. So if I need to see this larger, I click this off and I mouse wheel as many times as I want. And then I click it back on to be able to adjust my camera view. So that's going between the different views and enabling the camera view. This right here, this thing that looks like a life preserver, that's called the 3D cursor. Wherever the 3D cursor is, so I'm gonna to go to front view. That's where your new shapes are going to be added. So I'm gonna move this out of the way so here's my 3D cursor in the scene. I'm moving this around. You know, you can do this in any view using your middle mouse to move around. So I'm going to add a cone. And it's added right where that middle, the 3D cursor is. So it's going to go from the origin point. That yellow dot is the origin point. The red circle is the 3D cursor. We'll be getting into that um, in a little bit once we start doing the bouncing ball, probably uh, Wednesday or next week. Does anyone have any questions on adding objects or changing how you view things in the scene, either by using the tilde key to change your view or by using your mouse wheel to change what you're looking at. Okay, everyone's good. Okay. Now we're going to start talking about selections. So the first thing I'm going to show you is delete. Let me zoom out. I'm going to just box select those by left clicking. If I hit X, delete everything I selected, 
is deleted or you could select it in the outline panel. So I'm going to shift a nope, shift a I'm going to add a cylinder into the scene. All right. So you can select things by clicking on them or select them in the outline right here. But there's another level of selection, and that's when you're in edit mode. So we're in object mode. This is what you use for adding objects and moving around in your scene. When you've got an object selected, and you go to edit mode. Now you can start to edit the mesh and the geometry of it. Up here at the top are the icons. This is for selecting a vertice. Vertice is one point on your geometry. This is for selecting an edge. An edge connects two vertices. This is for selecting a face. A face is a closed shape with three or more faces. I mean, three or more uh, points. Three points on a face is called a tri. Four points on a face like this is called a quad. More than four points is called an n-gon. You want to try and avoid n-gons. They'll give you bad shading when you're trying to render later on. Any questions on those three selection types? You could also choose one, two, or three on your keyboard. One is vertice, two is a line, and three is a face. Or you can click up here. Everyone good with that so far? Okay, so your two main modeling things you'll do are extrude and inset. I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to duplicate this cylinder. I went back to object mode. Shift D is how you duplicate. I'm going to move this along the X. So I hit G X. And that was my whole sequence shift D to duplicate G to grab and move its position. And then I hit X. So it's shift D G and X to move it on the X axes. This one, I'm going to show you extrude and this one, I'm going to show you inset. So I select one, go to edit mode. I'm going to be on face select, which is also the number three. To extrude, you hit the E key and then start dragging like that. This is for adding geometry. You can do other things like S to scale it. Well, let me extrude it up first. E extrude left click, then S. Now I can scale it or I could hit R to rotate it. And then left click. So extruding drags it out along the direction it's facing, and you could scale it or rotate it while you're doing that. So again, I could go here, E to extrude, hit S to scale it in some more, R to rotate it, just like that, okay? So now we're starting to get like a toothbrush head type of thing. We got one of those like electric toothbrushes. So that was just extruding out a face, scaling it inwards and rotating it. Does everyone see what extrude does? Okay. The opposite of extrude. So I'm going to go to object mode. The opposite of extrude is inset. So instead of grabbing geometry and dragging it outwards, inset will bring it inward. So I've got this face selected. E to extrude, I to inset, I to inset, I start dragging and it starts scaling inwards. This is useful for making things like window frames or borders. It just scales inward along the direction of the geometry. So now that I have this face, I could hit E to extrude. And if I want, I could go upwards or I could go down into itself to create a cavity. 
tab out of that. Everyone see the difference between extrude and inset? And are there any questions on that? Okay. I'm going to clear these out. Remember, I could select them up here. Hold down shift to get them both. X, delete. Okay. Now, we know that shift A will add things into the scene. We know that shift D will duplicate what we have selected. E will extrude things, I will inset them. You know hitting N pulls up sidebar panels, T pulls up tools, and you can drag the side of the toolbar to see the names of the tools. And you got a little intro to the review panel down here. I'm going to show you a little bit more that the review panel can do. Shift A, Mesh Circle. My review panel pops up. Click here to open it if you need to. You can change the number of vertices. So this is a way you can start to get some geometry with some pretty interesting results by exploring with this. Okay. So if I went into edit mode, a selects all, Alt-A deselects everything in edit mode. Let me go back to object mode. I was just showing you how you can change shapes in the review panel. I'm going to add back in a cylinder. And I'm going to go to edit mode and we're going to build upon selecting things in edit mode. And this time I'm going to go to my Edge tool, I mean my uh, line tool, that's number two. One, again, is to get a vertice. Two, selects an edge. And three, selects a face. So I'm going to go to edge select. If I click, I just get where it meets the two vertices. That's just clicking. Now, an edge loop is all connected edges that go along an object in the topology. To get an edge loop of, you know, uninterrupted edges, you hold down Alt while you click an edge. And that gets the whole loop. So that would be an edge. That would be an edge loop. Any questions on that? Okay. We'll go to three for my face select. Let's try and inset this a little bit. And I'll inset it one more time. And this time I'm going to hit X and I'm going to delete the face. So if you need to fill up some space like these empty faces, you need to get all the edges selected. So I'm going to edge loop that by holding down Alt with my edge select. And if you hit F, you can fill it, or you can try the function F3 key. And I can try a grid fill if I've got enough space. And what this did was it filled up not only just the face, but it made a grid. And this gives you better topology sometimes when you're working instead of having a big open face is split up into even faces. So we'll talk about how that benefits when you're doing shading later on, but F to fill where you can do function F3 and type in grid fill into the search. And again, up here is where you got wireframe, solid material and rendered. And those, of course, will look different when you're in edit mode and object mode. Okay, I'm going to delete this, go add in another cylinder, and we'll tab into edit mode. 
Okay. Now we're going to start learning about edge flow in your mesh. What that basically means, I'm going to hide my floor. Edge flow, each one of these faces is the same size and the same distance apart, and they're rotating evenly. This is an example of good edge flow. So if I grab this, move it down, and move it out, you're already seeing we're starting to get bad shading issues. These faces are no longer the same. They're no longer evenly spread out. That would be an example of a disruption of your edge flow. So choose wisely when you're doing this and look out for the size of the faces you do when you create it because it can cause some issues. You normally want to have even spacing with things and all the faces being the same size for your best topology and edge flow. Are there any questions on that? You are not doing Blender for your final project. You are, or you could if you want, but you don't have to use Blender. This is just part of the course you're learning 3D, so don't worry about it. Um, okay, so we're talking about shading and shading issues. Here's our cylinder. I'm going to duplicate it. Okay. I'm going to right click on this one in object mode and choose shade smooth. And I'm getting some horrible shading happening. What's causing this is we're going from straight faces that are going straight up and down to a circular face. And it's trying to find the difference between these two faces. So it's going from straight up to straight across a square to a circle. And you can see it just looks really bad. One thing you can do to try and fix this instead of shade smooth, you can, I'll duplicate this one more time. You can right click and choose shade auto smooth. And look at the difference between this one and this one. This is horrible shading and this is smooth shading. This one's casting a shadow over that one. But now you can see the difference. That's shade auto smooth. It helps change where faces meet to get better shading. If you forget to do that and you right click and do shade smooth, to fix that and turn it on, you go to this green triangle over here. So these are all your different properties panels tabs that you can open up. And the green one is basically for your geometry and your mesh. And you go scroll down where it says normals and click on auto smooth and that will fix it. Don't mess around with the angle too much because it can give you bad results. Like see right there, I went beyond the part. 30 is the default. I usually keep it at the default 30. And if you ever mess something up, you can right click over it and choose reset to default value and you're good. So that's an example of good and bad shading and how your geometry, your topology and edge flow can influence how your object is shaded in the viewport. Any questions on that? Okay. Here we are in perspective mode. Clicking on this right here, this grid, changes the view from perspective to orthographic. Orthographic shows you no distortion in 3D space, and it helps with modeling and lining things up. Perspective obviously has the more natural look that would happen in the real world because things distort over space, as we've learned.
And I just use my tilde key to change my view there. All right. So, you know how to add objects, you know how to delete objects, you know how to select in edit mode, and you've learned about extrude, and you've learned about inset. Now we're going to start talking about bevels. And there's a lot of beveling to cover. So I'm going to make a cube, shift A cube. There's my cube, and I'm gonna to go to solid view. You add your bevels in edit mode. So I've got my object selected. I go to edit mode, and here's where we're gonna start. Okay, I'm gonna be in edge mode. That's number two on your keyboard. And I'm gonna select this. To bevel, control B, left mouse button and drag. Default bevel in Blender is a 45 degree cut. In architecture, and engineering, this is called a chamfer, C-H-A-M-F-E-R. It's a 45 degree cut. That's the default. Now I'm gonna look at this edge over here. I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna hit Control-B. I'm gonna drag with my left mouse wheel, my left mouse button. Then I'm gonna mouse wheel. I'm mouse wheeling up and it's adding segments. You could also edit that right here in your review panel. Get the look you want. And you'll notice they're all evenly spaced. So just dragging after control B creates a chamfer. Dragging and then mouse wheel up or down will add more segments for a rounded edge. Additionally, once you've made a chamfer, if you want, you can select these two edges by holding down shift, control B, and then I can adjust to whatever width I want and however many segments I want. You want to be careful with how much geometry you have because that'll slow down your render and just make things more difficult to work with. So I'm going to go out of there and oh, before I do that, I'm going to go to vertice mode and I'm going to click these four vertices. Hit control B to bevel. Go to my review panel, go to vertices instead. So instead of beveling an edge, we're beveling a vertice and watch that doesn't get too heavy with your geometry because things can go sideways very quickly. So you can bevel vertices as well as edges. You can make chamfers, you can get rounded edges, or you can do a chamfer with rounded corners. To go between your edit mode and object mode, you can use the drop down or, you know, hang tab will work as well. So if I right click on this and shade auto smooth, I've got some nice geometry. Any questions on bevels? Right. A uh, quick little tip, you can basically model anything you want using cubes and spheres, I mean cubes and cylinders. So if I had a cube and then I put in a cylinder, not a circle cylinder, sorry. You could use just these two shapes to model out a camera. And you could say, all right, I make this a little bit bigger on the X, so that's S an X and then 
you could rotate this RX 90. That's what I did down there. And you could line everything up in your top view. I'm using my gizmos. So I basically blocked out my rough shape. You could do other things like beveling, as you saw, to get more geometry. So I could select this whole edge and start getting my rounded corners. And now you start seeing how this is more and more like a camera. Uh, I can tab back out there, go here, tab in, and you'd want to inset that face. So first let me three for my face select, I for my inset, and then I could E extrude it in towards the camera body. And you could see just how quickly a cube and a cylinder with a little bit of beveling can start looking more and more like a camera. So it's really extrude, inset, bevels. Those are like the basic building blocks for designing anything really. And I'll use this. So if I go G X, it moves pretty fast. If I go G X and then I hold down shift, the transform is not as severe. To make your transforms more manageable, holding down shift while you do it will slow down the amount that it's moving. So holding shift while you're doing transforms like grab or rotation or uh, scale will give you more control. And as we said before, bevels help give you smoother shading and highlights, and they help uh, add a level of finesse to your geometry. Rarely ever in the world will you see a hard edge like that. Almost everything is beveled. It's got some sort of bevel because, you know, hard edges are just too unnatural. Even knives have bevels. See the difference? So bevels help give you that extra realism and detail. And you can see quickly how they help catch highlights more than a flat edge. Any questions so far? All right. I'm going to go shift A and add back in another cube. And I'm going to go into my edit mode. So, you know, E for extrude for dragging out faces. I to inset to bring them inwards like a window frame. Control B to bevel them. You can also do what's called a loop cut. Loop cuts help add geometry only to certain parts of your mesh. And it's an incredibly useful, powerful tool. So to do a loop cut, you have to be in edit mode. Here's your object. And I'm going to just select a face, like right here, to do a loop cut. So bevels are control B. Loop cuts are control R. So if I hit control R, let me actually select all. So I hit A to select all, control R. Now I'm starting to see it. Based upon where I put my mouse, this would be a loop cut going vertically. That's a loop cut going horizontally. I'll do horizontally. So first you pick which direction it's going to go. Then you can mouse wheel to add more loop cuts. And you can add as many as you need. You left click to accept the number and then you can slide them up or down or you can just right click to have them be evenly spread out. Control R, choose the direction you want the loop cuts, and then mouse wheel to choose the number of loop cuts. So I'm gonna change this to two. If I hit S for scale and then Z, because Z is going up or down, I can now scale out the distance of those edge cuts. I mean, of those loop cuts I just made. So now they're still evenly spaced out. I just increase the space between them to get that type of geometry. A 
loop cuts are incredibly useful. I added all that extra geometry. I can extrude this inwards, get something different, and still have all this. So they really help you have more to work with and refine your shape. All right. So I'm going to go back into edit mode. I mean, object mode, delete this. And we've almost finished what I wanted to cover in this lecture. Before I move on, are there any questions over anything we've covered so far? All right. So I'm going to shift A out of cube. There's my cube and I'm going to shift a add a cylinder. So I've got a cube and I've got a cylinder. Now at the beginning of the lecture, I told you go edit preferences, add ons, and we added the bull tool B O O L. You click this box and then when it's loaded, it's save and load. The bull tool is like the Pathfinder in Illustrator, but it works in 3D. But here's what I want you to remember about it. It's one object cutting into another object. That's the first part of it. But the second part, the cutting object, you want to have the right amount of geometry. If you have too little geometry, you'll get bad shading. If you have too much geometry, it's just, uh, it's just too much. Um, so I need to add some geometry to this cube to get a better Boolean. So I'm going to go into edit mode and let's try right click subdivide and I can change the number of cuts. And I'm kind of happy with that. So I'll go back to edit mode. So right there, that subdivide just kept dividing the amount of geometry. So now I've got a lot of geometry there and a pretty decent amount here. Let me subdivide this to just to be on the safe side. So I'm going to go to edit mode, right click, subdivide and tab out of it. So I've got lots of geometry. I'm going to move my cylinder. Let me scale it so it's a little smaller. So you can see how you got to look from side to side. All right, here is how you use the bull tool to make your uh, booleans. I'm going to shift D, grab that along the Y, and shift D, grab it along the Y. Okay, the first one, whenever you're doing a boolean, you click on the cutting tool first. So I'm cutting with this, hold down shift, click on what's being cut into, and then you hit control shift B, control shift B. So the cutting tool first, hold down shift, what it's cutting into. I'm going to do a brush Boolean difference. And if you have any issues, go to this wrench. This is your modifiers and you can try clicking on fast. So this has good clean geometry. I'm going to uh, right click auto shade smooth because we have the proper amount of geometry. That's what a Boolean does. You can already start to see some of the uses for it. So again, what I'm cutting with, hold down shift. This time I'm going to do control shift B. I'm going to choose a union. And this is going to join the two objects together. And that will help when you need to have two shapes that should be joined together. So if I hit tab, I can go back into edit mode and I'll do edge select, hold down alt, no, let's try here. You can start to get more complex geometry by joining those together and beveling the parts you need. Uh, lastly, I'm gonna select this cutter, that control shift B, and I'll choose intersect. And that's where the two of them meet. Also in here, just a quick little tip. 
if I put a solidify modifier on this Boolean I just did by going to the wrench, the drop down, and choosing solidify, I can adjust the thickness. And now I'm starting to get slices. You see a lot of slice detail in models online and in movies. So that was a Boolean with a solidify modifier thrown on it. You choose which direction it's going and you can get those nice little detail slices. Like such. And lastly, I'm just going to show you one thing and then we're all done. So congratulations on uh, muscling through the lecture. Hopefully you didn't find it too boring. So I, th I think this program is absolutely fascinating. Uh, need all this. I'm going to add cube. Go to my solid view. We're in edit mode. All right. This is a huge warning. I'm going to do my face select. Now we know E to extrude, and then you can click and drag. Fine. But what happens if you hit E to extrude and click off it by accident. So I go E to extrude and I just left clicked to accept it. Well, now we've got extra geometry that's overlapping. This line is a thin black line. This is a thick black line. You have to watch out when you extrude or inset something because it makes a copy right there, even if you don't move it. So this is a plugin called 3D Print. And I'm going to just check all. And it's saying there's overlapping faces. Click Make Manifold and see if it fixes it for me. Another thing you do is Go to edge select. You can select the edges that you did by accident and hit the M key and try merge by distance to get rid of that overlapping geometry. So that's where we're going to stop tonight. We're going to go a little bit more into a uh, modeling and some other things Wednesday. But then after that, we're going to do the bouncing ball. So that'll be next week. So you're going to learn about animation and applying the 12 principles of animation in 3D. And it's, it's you know, I want you to have an understanding of topology and edge flow and editing shapes before you go into complex things like uh, trying to get squash and stretch to work properly in a 3D space. So any questions before I end the lecture? Okay. Does anybody have anything they want me to look at in uh, lab time?